Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today we're going to be traveling all the way back to 1987 to listen to Signs of Life by Pink Floyd. Really excited for this one. Apparently it's a synth-heavy song. It's the album opener, and it's been built up very highly by you guys. So quite excited for this journey. It's only a little over four minutes. Kind of wish it was longer already. Anyway, it's an instrumental, obviously, and the only vocals are of Nick Mason reciting part of a poem. It also opens with a recording of Langley Iddens rowing across the Thames River. So, I know I'm going to love it. It's got water sounds, plenty of synth, probably really spacey and ambient, so let's go. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button as well as the notification bell to join the Retro Reactions community where it's all amazing music all the time. Here we go.
just like that, we lead into Learning to Fly, a perfect, perfect album opener, just like you guys told me. I could have uh, listened to that for 30 more minutes. Incredible ambiance. I wanted more, but there was so much sonic beauty packed into just over four minutes there. Incredible. No surprise, of course. A perfect way to set the tone for this grand album, this deep album. Uh, just so ethereal, so spacey, so important, so interesting, so attention capturing. And again, shades of former past Pink Floyd, you know, subtly being drawn in for this amazing sonic experience. And this is just one sonic experience out of 11. I can't wait till I've heard every song here. That way I can, you know, play the whole album through the way you guys did, the way it was meant to be, to have this unbelievably indescribable rich sonic experience that lasts a whole, you know, 45 to an hour. Again, the way it was meant. That's going to be incredible. We start with these gentle water splashes and creaking oar sounds. So comforting, so relaxing. I'd love that. Definitely some ASMR for my ears there. Then we get a bit sci-fi and spacey with those synths plus the water sounds. Perfect combination there. Nick Mason's vocals, really, really cool. I love that what he was saying, especially the last sentence or the last phrase was repeated over and over. Uh, the pitch seemed lowered, uh, deeper, you know, more effective that way. I think they did that to make it more ominous, more surreal. That's how I heard it. Maybe it was not lowered. Maybe he just has a low voice, but I don't know. They did some kind of effects on it for sure. Really enjoyed that. I also love that the water sounds kept going, I think, throughout the whole song. An excellent choice. Really, really like that. We got them in the beginning. I enjoyed them so much in the beginning. But then, you know, they continued through the song, you know, little bookends, water splashes here to just uh, heighten the sonic experience. And then David Gilmore slowly comes in with that electric guitar with more spacey synths as the backdrop to that excellent guitar work. It was definitely soul melting. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it was more restrained than a lot of his solos, but still highly effective and very enjoyable. One of my favorite parts of the song, there was this really high distant uh, whistle synth going on. It was mimicking uh, David's guitar lines. It happened a few times. Really, really cool. Yes, yes, yes. An excellent artistic choice there. Okay, so of course not much lyrics here. I think the only lyrics are, when the childlike view of the world went, nothing replaced it. And apparently that's probably a reference to Sid Barrett, I'm guessing. I know they reference him several times in their music. And so, you know, he had that childlike quality, that childlike innocence in the beginning. And then, you know, it talks about what happens when that's lost. And I think that may be the point of the whole song. Uh, for me, the music represents a life journey. And I think that's why the uh, rowing sounds, you know, kept going throughout the song to represent that journey, a literal journey through life a contemplative journey through life, all the ups and downs in life, and the loss of innocence as we grow into adults. Uh, I think the song puts a mirror up for the listener to see and reflect on their own journey, whatever they're going through, whatever they've gone through, and whatever is ahead. So really, really love this one, as expected. I knew it in the beginning. It was so reflective, so quiet, so spacey, so ambient, so beautiful, so gentle, so interesting. Could go on forever. You know, not enough adjectives for Pink Floyd. I'm giving this one the Epic Platinum Record Award. Yes, for Signs of Life by Pink Floyd 1987. Thank you so much, David Gilmore, Nick Mason, Richard Wright, Bob Ezrin, and John Karen. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below if you wish to chat about this gem or anything by Pink Floyd. Would love your feedback. See you take care, stay safe, stay hydrated, and remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night. And I'll see you next time in the past.